we 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 meet tonight and you bring the monkey and I bring the pills. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Just like in the movies. What in the uh let's both go to the bathroom at the same time, okay? Okay. I'll make sure that I wake you up if you've fallen asleep. Okay. Okay. And the girl, who you didn't even know until just now, saunters off to her own bunk. Emily um, gets off her bed and she doesn't want to go back and get an assessment. She's not sure she has it in her. But the need and the want to find her stuffed animal just overrules everything else. It's the key to her somewhat functioning. She knows what she needs to do. And she knocks on the therapist's office. Come. Emily opens the door quietly. You're back so soon. Emily, take a seat on the stool, please. I had an accident with my arms. Mm. Oh, I can see that. Would you like me to put proper bandages on them? Yeah, yes. You really should have come to me when this happened, Emily. It was because... Oh, I, I, I don't, I don't. It was because... I don't want to know, I don't want to know. Uh, I ran out of pills quickly. You... It ha didn't have any more pills and then... Those pills were supposed to last you a long time. I didn't know how many to take. I told you how many to take and you're clearly not very good at listening. I for I forgot. I forgot it. Uh, okay, let's get a bandage on you. Ooh, that's a nasty one. What were you using? Pieces of glass? Yes. Box. Bite. She looks up at you from the wound. Just her eyes. Her head doesn't move. She smiles a little. It's creative. Well... I, so the reason I say that is most of the children here, though, if they decide they're going to start uh, getting a bit masochistic, they'll use a compass, you know, you know, for making circles, maths, or they'll, you know, so they'll take um, some safety razors from the older children, you know how it is, um, and pop out the blade. That's a recommended method, I understand, is very hip among some of the children, uh, but using glass. You'll have to tell me where you got it from though, because that means a window will need replacing. Anyway, that's the bandage. The bathroom. Emily, she sits on the corner of her desk. She takes both your hands in hers. Wake up! Wake up, Emily! To your eyes, in a flash, her face is once again like that of a giant millipede, chittering, antennae twitching. Wake up! This is your chance. Fight back. Stop being a victim all your life. Victimhood begets victimhood time and again. Victims inevitably fall into victimhood. I am your mother. You are my little girl. You need to start fighting fire with fire. Emily stands up. And removes her hands. I need 
pills because I'm sick and sick people need pills. Pills, pills, pills. Millipede Crow stalks to the cabinet behind her desk, unlocks it, grabs a handful of pill bottles and rolls them across the desk. Most of them roll straight onto the floor. And then she grabs a knife from her desk. A big one. More of a dagger than a knife, in fact. And places it. Which do you need more? A proper knife? Or pills? You need to fight back. Do you want to feel better or take control? Emily grabs the knife. She's not really sure why. She came in there to get pills. But somehow... What... The creature in front of her is telling her... Resonates with her. It's almost like it's one of the only things right now that's giving her confidence. Where it used to be an enemy of hers, it's now a guide. If that's a good thing or a bad thing, she doesn't really know. Her face melts back into the Dr. Crow you saw when you entered the office. Session is over now. You can go. You've got your prescription. I hope it makes you feel better. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Close the door behind you. Damien. Where are you at this time? Hmm. What time, roughly, is it in the evening? It's early evening. You don't have to be in your dorms yet, but there are very few places you can go. You could go to chapel, you could go to the cafeteria, you could go to the rec room uh, to play on one of the video games there, in theory. I suppose I'm just pacing the hallways, roughly eventually knowing I have to head back to the dorm, but just, again, I don't have to be anywhere, so what's the harm in just walking? Maybe it's nerves, maybe I'm thinking which... Where could you meet? Where could you plot? Again, a little bit like a game, but I don't know. At the same time, I'm tired. I've been losing track of the days, which is funny for me, because the thing that I think of is that somehow, despite everything, I've been sleeping well. Or I seem to have been sleeping normally, which... I'm not entirely sure if that's a good sign or a bad sign, but again, I keep thinking about those cogs and didn't, isn't that something I dreamt of? I, I do try and not think of the nightmares because obviously they upset me, but is that something I've seen? I don't know. I also keep thinking to myself that I really need to, well, I can next find Tobin. I need to have a word with him because he's always talking to that girl and, and uh, what's that all about? What's all that about? But it doesn't seem like he's anywhere around, so... Yes, I just pace a little. I don't see Emily around either, I don't like that. Why do they keep disappearing? Hey! Hmm? You recognise the voice. The custodian from earlier. Here you are again, not hanging out with the other kids. Hmm? Oh. Do you like being alone or something? Oh, uh... No, just... She walks towards you. She is carrying a toolbox. Uh, no, I just, uh, you know, think better when I'm alone, but actually my friends seem to be elsewhere as well. Um, hey. Hello. Do you want to come down to the basement? Uh... I get that that sounds a bit weird, uh, but, you know, if you've got nothing better to do... I've got some cool stuff down there you might want to see. Is that okay? Well, I mean, that's up to you, isn't it? 
On one hand, I am a little suspicious of this woman. She does seem to be the only person here who seems like a normal adult. And she did help us with the radio, plus the basement. Is there something down there that could help? Maybe. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Okay. Alright, follow me. If any of the kids ask where you're going, just don't say you're with me, okay? Yeah, sure, of course. Sorry, was it Miss Fran... No, uh, Miss Franklin? Call me Chanara, please. Oh. You don't need to call me Miss Franklin. Okay. So, yeah, I'm guessing you're finding it pretty difficult here. I look around a little, waiting, perhaps, but until we're actually downstairs before I say anything at all, really. I just sort of remark, uh, it's pretty awful. Well, let me show you the underground, shall I? This might open your eyes a little. Sure, I say slightly hesitantly. Yeah, I get it, you know, I get it. I understand why you and that sweet girl, Emily, are so scared here. It's, um, it's not a nice place to be. I get it. I do. But, you know, you've got to find your pleasures where you can. She takes you down a staircase in the south wing. This is the boiler room. Bang, bang, bang. She bangs her hand against the boiler. Yeah. Hasn't been replaced since the place was a workhouse. So it barely functions. And when it is running, it grinds, moans, and shrieks. Uh, for a while, some of the kids here thought I was feeding children into it. And that's where the screams were coming from. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway I don't do that but anyway this is the boiler uh, there's no budget to hire an engineer so it's never going to be properly fixed I just have to do patchwork on it hmm. uh, through here maintenance room uh, is where I spend most of my time when I'm not fixing lighting, heating and other functions around the sensor the room itself is a trash heap, you can see that. It's potentially harmful to anyone entering who isn't Franklin. But she seems to know the way around the maze of scrap metal, hanging tools and broken furniture. Undoubtedly the heavy duty overalls she wears help. So you just uh, are the only one here who cleans stuff up? Or fixes things? Well, yeah, that's my role. Um, you know, one part janitor, one part custodian, two parts. Uh, I guess that's more parts than. Yeah, either way, yeah, uh, that's probably the easiest way to think of it. Honestly, to you, it looks like a serial killer's den. This place, with all of its hanging, rusted implements and broken pieces of metal and wood. She seems innocent enough, but this room doesn't look like a nice place to be. Hmm. No, it fills me with a sense of unease, or at the same time I think to myself that if you were going to arrange an accident anywhere, this would be the place to do it. This is basically it. I mean, there's, uh, you can get down underground uh, underneath the north wing as well. Um... That's not my part of the building. No? What, what's that part? Well, I mean, some of it was uh, down here back when this was a workhouse, and there's just parts I'm not allowed in, like Dr. Crow um, keeps the door locked, you know? Oh, like the memory hole? Oh, memory hole's upstairs. Uh, oh, wow. There is a place down in the cellars underneath the north wing, though, that I've heard some kids refer to it as the hollow. It's a bit sad, really. Why is it sad? What, is it like some sort of hole in the foundation or something? Pretty much. It's where, um... She puts her hand through her hair. She does look a bit... sad about it. I think... I think boys and girls go there... For private time, you know, it's a respite from abuse, quiet place where they can 
play or cry. It is. And there's a single light bulb that I make sure is already always there, you know. Um. I never want it to just be dark down there because it's like the only safe place in the building. Feels like to me. I kind of give her a long, hard look. I'm trying to use my intuition. Is she? Does she seem like she genuinely is doing this as an act of kindness to the kids here? Yeah. Uh, make a roll. Hmm. It's a good question. Fifteen. You get the impression her motives are sincere. What it comes through as a kind of complication, though, is she isn't doing much. She is giving them a place where they can hide, sure. She is making sure there's a light bulb in a an underground chamber for children to cry in. But you can see on her face, along with the sadness about the general situation in St. Jude's, there is... And this is what you're not sure on. Whether she is even aware of what she could be doing to help or whether she is, for whatever reason, incapable of taking further steps. Like, I don't know, calling child services. Or if she's aware children are being hurt, somehow intervening. Hmm. I kind of fiddle with my glasses for a moment, looking at a piece of metal on the ground, and then I just very idly say... So why do you work here, Chiara? Chinara, and I do it for the money. Chinara? Really? So. Well, I mean, I'm not getting work anywhere else. And, um... I, I do it because the kids need, need an ally, don't they, on the inside? I mean, imagine if I left. If I left, who would they go to? Who would people like you go to, to have a conversation that isn't tinged with some kind of malice? Yeah, but if you really wanted to do something, you could actually do something. Not that I'm saying there's anything wrong here. What, what, what are you saying? That, what, I'd call the police or something? I shrug. Why not? Okay, kid. Here's how it works. If I blow a whistle, not that there's a whistle to blow, but if I blow one, if I bring the authorities in here to see what a shithole this place is, uh, to all the people that live and work here, sure. It'll help a few kids out. Most of them will get moved on to homes that are equally as bad, maybe even worse. But it will do me out of a job. I'm not going to get a reward for that. And what's more, I guarantee people like Dr. Crow, Father Vogel, they will ensure that I will not be hired anywhere else. They've got, they can pull strings. You know, people like that, municipal people, people connected to the city, they can work things like that and I need the money so I know that's not very sympathetic I get it, I get it like I said I get it but I'm just doing the best I can I'm doing the best I can but my hands are tied what, what do you expect me to do just lose my job, lose my income for what I don't know maybe people getting murdered is you know fine with you Murder. Oh, I've not. I've not. Okay. All right. I've not seen anyone getting murdered here. Things would be different. If people got murdered here. Fair enough. I'll be right on the phone to the police. The but prefects kill people. You're not stupid. You know. I can't do anything about it. No one can. But you know. Listen. That's... I'm not hearing this. I'm. Not... This is. Uh... 
This is foolishness. Have you ever seen the other kids, those prefects, up there on those upper floors? In all this time, you've never seen them heading up there in little groups? Maybe one or two? Have you ever noticed how people disappear around here? What happened to the... Oh, you wouldn't even know. Hey, I'm not even saying you should do something. I'm just... You said you wanted to offer a chat. Well, here you go. I'm telling you these things. Yeah, well, this is the kind of thing that I don't need to hear. Well, tough. Sometimes people need to hear things. I'm sorry that life isn't easy. You know, you're pretty grown up for a teenage kid. I kind of slump a little. Maybe if my toe was a bit aggressive, it kind of eases off. I feel that maybe this woman can't do anything. Maybe she has a point, although if she really knew, surely she'd do something because it's more than just a bad place now. No, no, I'm feel it and I just say there's more here than just bad people it's like this place is just wrong like wrong and I think people like Crow I think they know that and they do it deliberately I think maybe I don't know listen I know there's some assholes that work here kid I get it I understand that and I get that some of the kids are horrible to other kids. Kids are like that. They can be cruel. And I get that the prefects sometimes take new kids away and haze them. They do that. They do that in, in schools for posh kids as well. But, listen, there aren't any murderers here. I've never found a body. I've never seen someone get killed. This, you, you could... You could take an asshole like Mr. Greep, but if he was aware of a murder taking place, he would quickly toe the line. He would quickly, you know, call the cops, do what's right. And where do the kids go when they vanish? What do you mean they vanish? I... Listen, they don't keep tabs on every single kid. So, and I, I'm... I guess, you know, if there's a kid like you, I'm talking to you right now, if you're not here in a few weeks, I think it's a safe bet you've probably gone home with a pat on your back and said well, you're rehabilitated and fit for society. And I think that's far more likely than you being murdered and your body vanishing. Don't you... Don't you... Even if all I'm saying is rubbish, even if you don't actually do anything, doesn't even a little bit of you think that if that was happening and you were part of it like would you not feel anything yes of course i would feel something of course i would be upset but of course i would feel dreadful my soul would would tear itself apart i would not be able to live with the guilt of knowing that i had stood by and done nothing as children die of course I would fucking feel something. But you are a kid, and you don't understand. You may act like a grown-up, but you're not a grown-up. You don't have a grown-up's responsibility. You don't have a family that you've got to feed. You don't have a mortgage you've got to pay. And I'm not just going to jack in my one good source of income because some kid has come down here sounding like Columbo like there's bodies all around the place that no one has ever found. You know I walk every damn metre of this building pretty much every day and I see some pretty horrible stuff but I have never once found a dead body. So yeah I would feel bad if that happened. I feel bad with everything that does happen but unless you unless you unless you have seen it unless you can prove it what am I supposed to do just go on your word who are you you know I'm done I'm I'm done with this I thought we could have a nice chat I could show you where I live down here this this was a mistake oh and here's your radio I fixed it oh thanks and I just give her a little sad look, very briefly, thinking, could I just take her to the bag? Could I take her to the recording? But 
But no, I don't think she'd help. She wouldn't help. She'd take the recording. She'd probably do something. And I sigh. But then I just say, Look, I'm not asking you to do anything. You've said you won't. Just think. Maybe just think about it. Because you're wrong on one thing. You say you wouldn't be able to do anything if you really knew that like, you just what like is tear your soul apart. But that's the point. People do things. That's what my dad says. And he helps people in dangerous situations. And I'm gonna try and see if my crafty move here could help me in any way. Maybe not. Hmm. Shall I roll for intuition? I think so. That is a... Eight. It's unlikely. Hmm. You see the guilt on her face. You see that you are manipulating her emotion. But you're not provoking her to rush forward and say, Yes, yes, Damien, I will do whatever you want. I will help you bring this place down. That isn't the connection you have with her. You haven't been able to persuade her to that degree. All you've managed to do is make her feel even worse about the stuff that she allows to take place, which may on some level be a victory. But whether it will help you... At least you can tell yourself there is a human being in this place with a conscience, even if she doesn't necessarily act on it. Filled with annoyance. I feel like, again, why can't anyone do something around here? This is that thing adults always say. My dad says it as well. He says so many people his age are full of bullshit. And he's right because, again, I get the excuse, but it's still an excuse. But I kind of try and bottle it because maybe... Maybe she actually was genuine, and I kind of, as I'm about to leave, just say, What happened to make you like this? I don't mean, like, you're not not caring. I mean, like, the money thing. Why can't you work anywhere else? Did you make a mistake somewhere? And You don't have to tell me. I'm just, w what happened to get you in this situation? I think we're done, kid. We're done. You can go. I nod, and as I turn away I just say, probably won't be me or anyone else, but one day, it won't last. And then I leave. Emily. The time has come for you to go to the bathroom with your new friend, Benita. As you enter the bathroom, she flicks the switch, the light goes on. Well? Emily nods. Okay, she holds her hand out. Where is my monkey. I will give him to you as soon no. as you give me. I've got three years on you, I'm I guessing. I don't care. Where is my monkey? She aims to strike you across the face. I am going to attack her with the knife. Okay, that's a violence roll then, please. Okay. I rolled 16. You stick her with the knife. While your right ear is ringing from where she has hit you, the wound in her abdomen is far worse. The immediate response from Benita isn't to scream, it's to look down in disbelief at the blade that has just sunk, probably only in couple of inches in. You're not the strongest of people, but still it's a stab into her guts. And then she looks up at you again, her eyes wide, and says, you, st you stabbed me. I'm gonna do it again if you don't give me my monkey. Ah! And she tries to smack you in the face 
with a closed fist now. I am going to try and dodge it. Okay. 13. Your reflex is too fast for the stabbed youth. And as she tries to punch you square in the nose to disable you, you just duck out of the way. Do you pull the knife back with you? Yeah, I want to... Can I see the monkey on her at all, or near her? No, you cannot. And the bathroom is well illuminated. Where am I standing? Your back is to the bathroom door, her back is to one of the cubicles. And where am I standing uh, in relation to her? Uh, you are standing pretty much two or three feet in front of her. Okay. You've just dodged your head out of the way of the blow, but you've not dashed away, unless you want to. If you want to have done that, that's why I ask you, what have you done with the knife? I don't necessarily want to strike her again, but I do want to threaten her with it and immobilize her. Um, so I want to pull the knife back with me, but as she's kind of getting back up from her attempt to punch me, or back her, um, on a standing position, I want to try to see if I can aim the knife at her throat or the back of her neck so she can feel it. Alright, I'm going to ask you to make a violence roll. Okay. I get 14. You are able to pull the knife from her abdomen and then thrust it up toward her throat. It will hold her in place, intimidated, as she bleeds from the guts. Emily might not be very big. But she is fast. She doesn't have a lot of body to move around. She has never wielded a knife before in her life. She's never attacked another human being. But it's like she's not really controlling her own body. It's like her brain is not connected to her body anymore. And there's something else. Something she's not really sure what is that's taking over her. If... It's just pure rage from being abused for her entire life. If it's her mental instability, the box telling her to man up, basically. She doesn't know. But she's full of rage and hatred. All that fear has turned into yeah, another secondary emotion. And that's just pure hate. And she sees the girl in front of her as her way to get her stuffed animal back. And to get control of herself again. She launches forward and places the knife right at her throat. She has to almost stand on her tippy toes to be able to do that. Which is kind of comical <laughs> in a sense. But... She manages to do it and presses it against her throat and stares into her eyes. Where is my monkey? Having been forced to pause, Benita's hands drop from the air and clutch at her stomach. She is now losing the adrenaline and becoming crucially aware that she's been stabbed. And she looks at you and she shakes her head. And there's tears welling up. I don't know. I just I just wanted something to take the edge off. I just wanted some pills. And I thought you'd be an easy target. Please don't hurt me again. Where is my monkey? I don't know. I don't know where your, where your monkey is. I've ne never seen your monkey. I saw you, you with a toy monkey on your arm. Some stuffed animal. But I... I've not seen it since it's gone. Please, can I let let me go to Doctor Crow's? I I I'm bleeding. I won't I won't tell her it was you. You know, Doctor Crow will know it was you. Emily is staring at the girl on the floor, and even though she knows. 
that Dr. Crow will know it's her and the consequences that might bear. She steps back and all that hate and rage disappears. It's almost like she can see herself and the girl attacked, bleeding, helpless, a victim. Can you find my monkey? I'll, I'll, I'll look for your monkey. I promise I'll look for your monkey. I'm, I'm so sorry I, I tried to threaten you. I, I really need to get to the doctors. Don't lie to me again. Okay, okay. I'm not a victim. I promise, I promise I won't lie to you. You can see the blood oozing through her blouse. It looks like a torrent of fire ants just pouring down her stomach and over her thighs. Emily drops the knife in front of her and turns around and walks out the bathroom. Not too long after, Benita dashes out and makes her way to Dr. Crow's office. The following day, the morning is a little bit of a haze, a little bit of a sleepwalk. You wake up, you get showered, you go to chapel, you go to the cafeteria. It's the routine, the routine, the routine, the routine. It is hammered and hammered and hammered into you. You go to Mr. Greep's class. You go to Edgewood's class. You go to the cafeteria again. It's the routine over and over. And it's still sleepwalking. It's still sleepwalking. With Damien having gone through an entirely disappointing conversation with maybe the one adult who could perhaps extend help with Tobin promised the possibility maybe just the illusion of escape and a mind only on that with Emily having stabbed this girl Benita and being consumed just briefly with that hate that maybe it was in her all along maybe Dr. Crow put it there or just woke it from a slumber everything is a haze and no one seems to care no one seems to care and Benita isn't around she's disappeared and no one questions it Lana's getting excited getting closer and closer to the evening she's confided in Tobin look I've got a couple of people I've got a couple of others who are going to help. Yeah. I've told them they'll get out as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah I've, I've asked some too. I say to her, I stayed up a long time after she had left. We didn't want to go back together because no reason to have a scene like that. And I was just walking around that place with the scaffolding and the new construction and just wondered why I felt so wrong the whole thing and then eventually I got too tired somewhere midway through the night got back and now I've been talking to a few people I hardly even remember who it was that just said what to do and where and to keep dead fucking quiet about it and it's all that haze not knowing if I'm doing the right thing or not. When you get back to your dorms after lunch, where you can start doing a little bit of homework before the afternoon classes, Emily, you find that dagger on the pillow of your bed. 
It still has Benita's blood on it. I take the dagger and I throw it in the bin. I don't want to look at it. I... I'm shocked after what happened. I feel like everything that was once Emily has always slowly disappearing. And Damien, hmm. you get a brief moment of time alone. Time with the radio that Chinara gave you. Mm, yeah. And it squeals into life. Just as you're on your lonesome. I kind of startle a little because, again, it's weird. Because I, I wanted to. I needed to talk to Tobin and I needed to see Emily, but there's never a time. And, and then the days, and, and I'm just so angry. But then I'm not doing anything. Why am I not doing anything? And then. The radio comes to life. I suppose I must have hit it somewhere, but I can't remember where, but I definitely hit it somewhere. But I, I just, yeah, snapped out of this haze. I just listen. You all right, mate? <sighs> what? Uh, no, uh... No, I, I can tell. Listen, got to speed up the timetable a little, okay? Well, I, I'm trying. We, we, it's been a... D oh, it's... Hmm. I kind of... Stutter a little. It's been a little while. It's a bit rude to keep an angel waiting, you know. Well, well, no, I'm trying, but I, 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 I just, the others are hard, so hard to talk to, and 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 I, I try to talk to someone here. Do you know about the woman, the, 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 the Miss Franklin? The, listen, listen, I can't see her. She's 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 beneath me. I'm is... here to protect you. And. Here's, here's the deal. If you can't convince your friends, then do it yourself. Okay? I'll save you. I'll save you. If you if you do it yourself, I'll save you. Okay? But well, that's not the point. The point is you're saving... You, I sort of frown a little. The point is you're saving everyone, technically. It's the point. Well, well yeah, the, the entire place will come down and it'll be glorious. Everyone will be free. None of this, no more. But you've got to do what I'm saying. And the longer you hold on, more children are going to suffer. Wait, listen. Wait. Listen. Damien. I know why you're there. I know you came in with the best of intentions. And everything's gone topsy-turvy and, well, let's be honest, kind of fucked up. Nothing's how you planned it. That's how life is sometimes. And it's no comfort, but that is how life is sometimes. And when that happens, you got to take control, mate. you got to do it yourself. You've got to be the authority. Okay? You understand? But, wait. I don't get it. If I just did it by myself, like, what's the difference? Because for the others... Like, you said they'll be freed, but what... Well, things might get a little hairy for them, okay? But at least you'll be okay. That's not what's important. You're a fucking angel. It's, it's not about me. It's about doing something for other people. That's the whole Listen. point. That's why Listen. people like the adults keep don't get. They keep going on and on about themselves. That's the problem. Well, this isn't about me, though, is it? It's about you. If I was to look at any of the kids in this place and think, which one of you was virtuous? Which one of you understands the meaning of justice? Who's been the most wronged by even being here? I would be pointing my finger at you. I'll be saying, Damien. Damien is the boy. He would. That's why I'm speaking to you right now, mate. Do you think my dad would? I know he would. But I haven't even... That's the thing, I needed them because I can't take down someone like fucking Isaac by myself, not like no. even without a weapon. 
Who said you got to go for Isaac? Well, You're not just... Abraham. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's a that's a joke. Listen. Did you know that uh, Isaac was 37 years old when Abraham tried to kill him for our Lord God? Yeah, it's one of those things that people get confused about. They say, oh, Abraham was tasked with murdering his infant son. Isaac was 37 years old, mate. But it was no less of a sacrifice for Abraham. It was still his flesh and blood. And sometimes, when you ask to sacrifice, it's not always the sacrifice you want, otherwise it wouldn't be much of a sacrifice, would it? You're saying, well, I want to kill Isaac. Isaac's the one who's got to fall, because Isaac's the big bad. Well, he is. Well, that's not a sacrifice. Isaac will be dealt with in time. I'll deal with Isaac. You sacrifice. You take someone off the table who, well, maybe they're not as bad. Maybe they are. Maybe they got some rough edges. But I can't come through until you do it. So, you're on the clock, mate. Not just for me, but every day you put it off, another child is going to suffer disappear, die. And that's not on me, that's on you. What a... Because I can't come through until you call me. You understand? What about Oscar? Does he... Does he hurt people as well? Uh, most of the kids in your place hurt people. Oscar is a special case. He likes to take him into the walls gets up close and personal with me I can practically feel him against my skin it's disgusting what he does yeah Oscar would be a good choice what do they what do they do so, they, they oh, kill I people don't and wanna, they feed I... them to the walls no no no, no, no you're no, gonna no. tell I can take it take, tell me please I... what Oscar does to them in the walls is the kind of thing that an angel should never have on their lips, you understand? he It's the kind of thing that the lowest of the criminal low does to their victims, you understand? Just tell me, what's the point of it? Dr. Cruz, like, what's the even the fucking point of all this? What, she kills kids because she it makes her happy or something? Or... Listen, I can't, I can't give you everything right now. I just can't. I can't, can't tell you everything until you sign me. But once you pull me through, I will explain everything. What you do have to know is Dr. Crow, she's not some rank-and-file human and human skin. She's not some depraved psychologist with a grudge against children. She's a much worse, more powerful force than that. She brought this entire little experiment together for her joys and other reasons. And I can show you the truth. I can open your eyes to the truth. Just like your eyes were opened when you saw my home. But you need to call me, Damien. You're the only one that can. Tobin's got dreams of flying away. Emily, she's a shadow of the girl I thought she would be. Bit of a disappointment. It's not her fault. But you've still got it together. It's not her fault. You've still got it. Which means it's up to you. Can you be the weapon I need? I need to still try and get them. Yeah, help me do that then at least. Help me get over whatever this... For some reason I am always don't think about it. I need to talk to them. Help me do that then at least. And then, if you can, surely you can do that. I'm not an agony aunt, mate, if you need help talking to your friends. I don't friend. mean that. I mean there's something... Like you said, I, I just, for some reason, I can't concentrate. Yeah, you're getting caught up in the machine. That's what it is. How do I stop that then? You throw us... <laughs> a wrench in the works, you know? 
you need to break the routine. You need to do something that's going to get you all together. Do what Dylan often does when he wants to break the routine. Start a fire. Or hurt someone. Or, I don't know, might cause a flood in the bathroom. I don't know. This is all mundane stuff. It's well below my ken. Do something like that that makes people have to act in a different way. Then you'll get your opportunity. Okay. Okay. Makes sense? You understand now? Maybe. I... I swear if you're... Not, if you're just messing me around... I'm not messing you around, mate. I'm your bloody fairy godmother. Okay, I'll try and do something like that. I'll try and move things forward. Alright, good lad. Alright, well, in that case, it might not be too long before you see me. I hope not. I hope you don't let any more kiddies suffer on your account, okay? Quit with the blackmail. Even if you are what you say you are. You don't need to keep telling me about, oh, if I take too long, if I spend too long, it's all suffering. I know. Just making sure you understand. All right then, well, in that case I'll uh, tune out. I'm guessing you don't want me to uh, replace my dulcet tones with music? No. <laughs> all right, all right, mate. Be in touch. And as the voice stops, I'm just filled with this, just this shred of doubt that it's, it's the right thing, but maybe it is. Maybe it's the only thing that actually makes sense. If people like that, Lady aren't going to do anything. If no one's going to do anything, something needs to be done. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played the scenario It Started and Ended with Screams for Cult Divinity Lost, from the upcoming Screams and Whispers scenario collection. The scenario was written by our friend Matthew Dawkins, who is also our Game Master. Joining Craig and Yalmar was the talented Clara Herbal. The music was made by Atrium Carceri and was used with permission from their label, Cryochamber. Check out their website at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for some moody, dark ambient. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Horschelbear, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, Camilla, and Ludwig Manford for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult of Indie Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and remember, death is only the beginning. <laughs>